Hello YouTube and welcome to another video. Today we're in Lisbon, you can see the airport behind me and we're going to take a journey on the metro from the airport. You can see again behind me this uh, red tunnel that leads into the metro. We're going to go down the red line of the subway metro system and we're going to get off at some of the more interesting stations, three or four of the stations, have a look around and see what's in those areas or points of interest within the station itself. So without further ado, we're going to go into the red tunnel and get a ticket and get on the red line. Down the escalator and into the ticket hall, this place can get pretty busy depending on the day of the week or the time of the day and how many flights are coming in. So there's often huge queues here. Luckily at this point, it wasn't too bad. So you can get straight into those machines on the left. Here you can see the different types of card that you can purchase. Here I'm buying um, a day ticket, six euros 45 so that we can get on and off the metro at different points so now that we've got a ticket the journey can begin okay so here you can see the red line um, actually on a map of Lisbon a, an actual geographical map so we're here at the airport and we're gonna go down this line, 12 stations in total, down to São Sebastião at the end. We're gonna get off at a couple of these stations. The first one we're gonna get off at is uh, Orient. So let's head there now. Not sure why I'm pulling this face, but it seemed like a good idea at the time. Here we've got a line map of the subway above the train doors. You can see the red line cutting through the green and the yellow and the blue at one point towards the end of the line. Most of the red line is separate. We're also going past Moscovite station here. So here we're arriving into Orient Station, which used to be my home station in 2011 and 2012. Used to always be running to grab the metro from this point. So the first interesting stop that we've got out at is Orient. Uh, the first three stations we passed were the airport, then Encarnacao and Moscovite. Those stations were all newly added to the line in 2012. This station actually used to be the end of the red line uh, prior to 2012. I also used to live in this area on this main street down there behind the station. We'll get some more different views of the station um, further on in the video, but you can see it behind me, very interesting design. We've also got the train station above, the subway below, and then the bus station at the back where you can get a lot of long distance buses to the Algarve or to Porto. So let's take a look around this area first and then we'll come back to the station when we move on. Here's a bit of a front view of the station. You can see um, bridges that connect across and also underneath to the Vasco da Gama shopping centre. And then behind the shopping centre is the, the waterfront. We're going to go and have a look down there now. Out the back of the Vasco da Gama shopping centre, which is well worth a visit in itself, you can see this board of different things that you can see in the area parked as Nassau Nations Park. A lot of interesting architecture, sculptures, artistic pieces to see here. Let's check out this one by Jorge Vieira. Behind me now and in the previous pictures is the Altis Arena, which is one of Lisbon's biggest uh, music venues and concert halls. It actually hosted the Eurovision Song Contest in 2018, the one that was won by Netta with the song Toy for Israel, and um, second place Cyprus, Fuego, one of the best songs. And also you can see a lot of flags, a lot of flags, as well as subways, metros. Um, these flags used to be displayed, presumably they still are, in um, alphabetical order of country name 
by its Portuguese name. So I used to enjoy kind of going down here, um, trying to name as many flags as possible. Nerd. And then we've got the Oceanarium behind me at this side. And then as we're gonna see down by the water, cable cars. Living in this area, my apartment was a few blocks away from here. And one of my housemates used to work at our company building that was also in this area. And we basically used to joke that she would be able to take the cable car from our apartment to work if she wanted to. She never did, but always an option. so quiet and peaceful um, in this area even though there's a lot of people sitting by the water everybody's just talking really quietly so I feel kind of bad being that YouTube person um, just going gobbing off about all of the things that are in the area um, we're gonna take a walk further down here and see a couple of other things again it's incredibly hot today uh, I think 27 28 degrees got an absolute sweat on particularly going through the subway, a lot of it's not air-conditioned, air so it's really, really hot. Um, one thing I tried to learn from the first video in Porto was don't go anywhere windy and stop putting your sunglasses in your hair and then taking them out. So my hair was wild. So over here, you can see that the cable cars go all the way from the oceanarium down there where we were before over to here, this sail-like building kind of similar style to the Burj Al Arab in Dubai. This is the Vasco da Gama Tower, which is actually the tallest building in Lisbon. And it was built uh, for the 1998 Expo, which basically most of this area was. So in Portuguese, it's known as Parque das Nações Nations Park, but often for short, it's known as Expo because of the World Fair that most of it was built for. Also, you can see the Vasco da Gama Bridge, which I think was the longest bridge in the world when it was built, again, in 1998. I think it's still the joint longest bridge in Europe along with the bridge that connects Denmark to Sweden. So a lot of stuff in this area is about 20, 25 years old almost. So as well as walking down by the water, there are also, um, there's also a big stretch of parks with a lot of nice little architectural structures, benches where you can just sit and relax. I'll put a little bit of a video in but this basically runs just adjacent to the waterfront walk. Lots of nice bars and restaurants too, so if you want to grab a drink, have some food in a nice setting, this place is definitely for you. Lovers of Starbucks, there's also a Starbucks in the area. Okay, so we're gonna head back to the metro station now. We'll take a little bit of a closer look at the station and then jump back on to the metro and go further down the red line. But definitely, if you are visiting Lisbon, this, I would say, is probably the most interesting stop on the red line. You could easily spend a whole day here doing different things. Lots and lots of things to do, so check it out. Here we're heading around the other side of the Altus Arena back towards the subway station which was designed by Spanish architect Santiago Calatrava in a modernist style but with heavy hints of gothic as you can see here from the front. Um, it's got all of these different types of shapes. It looks kind of like some robotic insect that would be in a comic film or action movie, something like that. From the outside it's really stunning still but I think the inside is dated quite heavily over the years. So that little journey took us past a few more stops, Cabo Ivo, Olivais, Chelash, and we would stop at all of them if we had time, but unfortunately not. Okay, so I've got off the subway at Bella Vista in the hope of some good views. Uh, I've never been to this area before, even though I used to pass it on the subway every day on the way to work. 
I think it's mainly a housing area, but there's meant to be a big park. I think one of Lisbon's biggest parks, lots of housing and maybe a shopping mall. But I'm gonna have a quick wander around and see if there's anything worth looking at in this area. I did take some quite dodgy footage of a supermarket, but it wasn't very good, so we've skipped that out. We've made it to Bella Vista um, Park, which is one of the biggest parks in Lisbon, and it's actually really quiet. The area around Bella Vista subway metro station seems um, a little bit sketchy, to be honest. A few dodgy characters hanging around that shopping centre. But just a couple of minutes walk away is this park. In the previous shots, you could see um, a plane taking off from Lisbon Airport, which is still only probably two or three kilometres away from here. And this area itself, Bella Vista, is probably only four or five kilometres, maybe less, from the historical centre and all the sites that you'll know. I'm gonna take a little bit of a walk around here and then get back on the red line and move on to the next station. I suppose again, this is where Lisbon is a city of contrast between the traditional sort of shabby chic type vibe of the center to the modern area that was built in the late nineties, um, Park de Sena Soich, where we've just been to. Um, this park is really quiet. Lots of dog walkers, um, people kicking footballs around with their children. Quite a nice feel to this, but a couple of minutes that way, we're gonna head back to uh, Bella Vista subway station. I'm gonna put the camera away because it is very sketchy. The camera did end up coming back out close to the subway station because there was some cool graffiti on the walls. Not sure what this says, but if anybody speaks Portuguese, feel free to drop it in the comments. This is the point where the subway goes outside. Unfortunately, the camera decided to flick to portrait view. I've put this in landscape so that it goes with the rest of the video. Now we've got off at the very next station uh, after the subway goes outside, which is Olayish. And this is one of the most interesting um, stations in terms of architecture and design. You can see behind me these big industrial columns and on the walls, lots of bright colors, lots of geometric shapes and patterns. I'm gonna have a quick look around this and get some more footage of it. This was another station that I used to just pass every day on the way to work and never got out to see more of it. Obviously you can see a little bit from the train, but never got out to walk around. The architectural design was by um, a Portuguese architect called Thomas Tavera, and the installation art was created by three or four other Portuguese designers. Really, really interesting to look around. So many bright colors, um, very different to a lot of the other stations. So this one really stands out. Also a nice glass viewing platform in the middle which is perfect for people watching if you just want to watch people come and go on the Lisbon Metro, this is the place to do it. I suppose the only potential downside to the design here was if you were heading home drunk or potentially if you were hung over the next day, it might not be the best thing to try and navigate. I'm 
stuck on repeat. I see the same skies every night. Oh, I need a sign. I need a reason why I'm alive. 'Cause I can figure out why. And at this point, we've reached the final station, Sao Sebastião. So from Olayes, we passed Alameda, where you can transfer to the green line, Saldana, where you can transfer to the yellow line, and then Sao Sebastião itself, where you can also transfer to the blue line. So here's a little bit of the station as well. Quite an industrial, metallic kind of feel to it. And we're going to head outside. Here you can see El Corte Inglés, which is a big department store where you can find a lot of top brands supermarkets cafes things like that and here's a beautiful street this looked amazing in person with a lot of different colored houses the sun was on it really nicely in the footage it looks a little cloudier than it actually was in person so as you can see we're right back into the city center now and the line doesn't take very long to get down obviously i made it take longer by getting off at some of the stops and talking about things but actually the red line is fairly short but with a lot of contrast down it we're gonna have a quick look around this area south Bastia, see if there's anything worth seeing Just feel so far away. I'm going around in circles look at the Luckily there was something worth seeing just around the corner and that was the Gulbenkian Park and Gardens. You have to kind of walk around the side to find the entrance, but this is a really serene, tranquil atmosphere in the middle of the city centre. Let's take a look around. Here's a handy map. The museum, as far as I'm aware, costs around 11 euros at the moment to go inside. Unfortunately, we didn't have time for that, but we did take a look at some of the things around the park, some of the little installations, particularly in these shipping containers. Here you can see a little snippet of what's going on inside some random films. I'm not sure exactly what's going on. If anybody does know, let me know in the comments. And anyone who likes to translate things, let us all know in the comments what this tells us. A really nice garden right in the centre of the city, just a couple of streets away from uh, Sao Sebastião metro station that we were just at. Um, housing the Gulbenkian Museum and a lot of works of modern art. It's a really tranquil feel inside here, even though it's surrounded by roads and you can probably hear the traffic noise. Um, but yeah, that's where we're going to leave it for today's video. This was the red line of Lisbon and some of the sites at various stations around it. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, like and subscribe. Let me know in the comments how badly I pronounced all of the Portuguese words and stations and places. Uh, there's a plane going overhead. Um, I'm going to do some more of these videos for the other lines if possible and also of some of the major sites. So yeah, like, subscribe, leave comments. Let me know that anybody's watching it because if you're not, I'm going to quit immediately. Goodbye for now. Feel so far away. I'm going round in circles. Look at through my head now. Oh, I